we've gotten a lot of opportunity to dive into some images from Sail Drone. This so is actually cool. from Hurricane Ernesto, powerful hurricane that was offshore, a perfect opportunity for Sail Drone. It was the first major hurricane, a drone passed through since Hurricane Sam in 2021. Since then, sail drones have been helping collect data inside of storms as they roll through the ocean. That's so awesome. The sail drone Explorer SD 1045 they captured in this video battle 30 foot waves and major winds to collect all of the data so critical to forecasting. Brian Cannon, the vice president of ocean mapping, joins us to teach us more about the work that sail drones are doing. This is so impressive and I love it because uh, they're powered by solar and also by wind. There's nobody on it. You get some great information. Yeah, good morning. Uh, thanks for having me on board. And uh, you're right, it's a very, uh, you know, it, it, it's the only kind of vehicle that can survive inside of a hurricane. And so I've uh, never been able to capture this kind of data before. Now, Brian, for viewers that might be a little noon to sail drone, uh, talk about how the science actually works. How does it survive 30 foot waves, major hurricane wind gusts? It's incredible that you guys even dreamed this dream up. Right. Well, this is a you know a great collaboration with NOAA uh, for our sail drone, which is an uncrewed surface vehicle, and it has a rigid wing, a lot like an airplane. In our normal configuration, it's it's fairly tall, but for hurricanes, we actually reduce the height of it, try to compact all these sensors close to the wing um, to make it a lower center of gravity. There, you can see a picture of it now, and so that allows you to you know be able to endure those uh, high winds and heavy seas. Uh, be able to take extremely heavy rolls, even roll over, uh, and be able to self-right and come back up. And so the sensors that we have on board are are those you would find on uh, those buoys that NOAA has out as well. So we looking at wind speeds, temperatures, relative humidities, uh, but we also look at energy flux. And we act, this year we added a couple of our drones have uh, CO2 sensors to try and determine how much of an impact a hurricane might have on the on the CO2 budget of of the earth as well. So pretty exciting thing for us to go, be able to go out. Uh, we have a dozen of these out in the in the area, in the Atlantic, in the Gulf of Mexico this year, uh, looking to penetrate these storms. That's awesome. How are you getting the data, the data real time? Uh, we're getting it back in, in real time. We have satellite communications. Very cool. Um, and what we're able to do is we, we take very high resolution data on board and we can't push all of that back just because uh, the bandwidth isn't big enough mm -hmm. for that. We, we downsample it, send back an average that's, you know, really good for forecasting. But then once we return to port, we deliver all that very high resolution data to the NOAA scientists so they can study and, and try and understand really, you know, the purpose of these is to understand intensification. Yeah. Why do these storms intensify and what is the physics behind that? We've never really been able to study that before because we're pretty good on a track of a storm. Um, we're still learning uh, what causes that intensification. And the better we get at that, the more of a warning we can give to uh, citizens along our coast. Yeah. And especially now when rapid intensification has begun such a big part of hurricanes and computer models struggle with it because to your point, we don't know a lot of what's going on inside because we're not there in the open water. Now you mentioned uh, how the instrument pack is, is very similar to what we have on buoys, but this is different because it's a 23 foot unmanned vessel that you can sail into a system instead of a buoy that's kind of stuck in a stationary position. Talk about how that gives you a unique angle for analyzing what's going on inside the storm. Right, you know, it's really, it's it's about a combination of all these sensors. Uh, you know, the buoys being in one spot uh, is really important for a persistent observation over time, and they collect fantastic data. Um, there are also ocean gliders out there looking at the structure within the ocean and trying to get in front of the storm. And of course, you have the hurricane hunters uh, dropping their sensors into the storm. So what we add is the ability to uh, be able to, to go where the storm is, um, you know, get in its path, and then basically let the storm run over us uh, so we can collect that data inside. But, you know, it really takes all of those sensors together to capture the whole picture of what's happening in these storms. Such great information. So critical as well as we forecast. Just real quick, we're almost out of time. What's, what's the shelf life on these? Um, you know, the halls themselves can last uh, for you know, 10, 15 years. Wow. So we've we've been in business for about 10 years. And then we, you know, you can upgrade sensors, uh, keep them calibrated. So it's so really a long lifespan on these. That's great.
Well, it's fascinating. Yeah. Uh, such awesome information. And of course, the goal here is to keep people safe. So such a beautiful partnership. Uh, Brian, thank you for joining us today. Vice President of Ocean Mapping from Sail Drone. We hope you have a great day. It's my pleasure.